Come on, Max. Come on. Look at this. I got something in the mail today. Get the door closed up here. Bet you can't guess what it is. That's right, shipped eggs. We're gonna hatch some shipped eggs. Hey there, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name is Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, balcony, deck, garage, or even a spare room in your house, if that's the way you wanna do it. Today, we're gonna to be hatching some shipped eggs. Well, not all today. I mean, they don't hatch in one day. They're gonna take some time, but I figured I'd bring you guys along for the experience. These came from Whiskey Tango Farms, so we're going to unbox them right now. We're going to show you how well they, they packaged them up, and we're going to see. I haven't opened the box yet. Hopefully they're all good. The post office can be kind of rough, but we're going to see how well they held up in the uh, transit. They've been sitting out on the front porch pretty much all day long. Hopefully we get a decent hatch rate out of this. i got the incubator going right now, heating up. It is at temperature right now. It says it's about a 66% humidity level, so it is getting pretty dry out right now. The humidity levels are starting to drop. I'll probably add a little bit of water to this, try to bump that up just a little bit, keep it up around 70%. I don't know if I'll add any water or not until lockdown. We're going to see. I'm going to let it run for a little while and see. But anyway, right now we got to get these things opened up, get them in the egg turner. We're going to let them sit overnight, rest, and then we'll go from there. So let me bring you in close for this. All right, this could be a little bit crowded here, but we're going to see what we can do to uh, make sure all this gets on camera. I went ahead and put tape over the uh, sensitive information so you can't see people's addresses. I've shown mine before on a shipping label, and people just kind of freaked out on me. Said, oh, you're showing your shipping label, or you're showing your uh, personal information. But I'm not too terribly worried about it. All right. Here we go. Look at that. A box inside a box. I need to... I need to get something to put all this stuff in so I don't throw it all over the floor and have to clean it up later. So give me just a second here. All right, I think I finally got all those packing peanuts out of there. We've got, let's see, a sticker, Whiskey Tango Farms sticker. That's pretty cool. A little bit dirty right now, but it'll clean up just fine. I have to find a nice place to stick that. Put it on the incubator, maybe. And then... Uh, see we got a nice something here once you have obtained your eggs we have advised of potential quail parents to follow these hatching instructions so nice you get a pretty decent set of instructions it says here too now if you haven't already done so now's an excellent time to put up your incubator get your incubator up to temp make sure that everything's working if you are if you are using a new to you or new incubator please keep in mind it may take more than 12 to 24 hours to find the settings uh, incubating your eggs set your incubator 99.5 Fahrenheit small fluctuations in temperature are normal anyway you guys can read all this it talks I mean it basically runs you through the incubation instructions so that's pretty handy um, and then there's troubleshooting information and a link to uh, get to their Facebook group if you have any problems to contact them so uh, very nice very nice touch indeed. I don't need these instructions, but uh, lots of people probably do, and I like that they include those in there. So let's take a look at the eggs. There they are. What did I get? It's a mystery. We got Egyptian fees, pearls, jumbo pharaoh, celadon, and fab fee, and it says the celadons are scarlet and red range and tuxedo. Scarlet plus red range and tuxedo. Nice. So we got a nice little mix of birds here. It'll be a, it's been a while since I've had anything but Jumbo Faro. Uh, I mean, they've got them. I don't know if you can see this in here or not, but it does have them marked out on here. What's what as far as the eggs go. So it looks like these closest to me, which you probably can't see. These are the Fab Fee. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep that straight. So I won't be able to keep track of that. They're all going in the incubator and uh, they're going to get mixed up. We're not going to know which ones are which. So let's work on getting them out of here and see how they how they survived this is always a tricky part getting your eggs out of there we go these are the pearls i think they said so far the eggs look great not a problem one with any of them yet i'm gonna push that one out the bottom if you are using an egg turner like mine, uh, what I'm doing with these shipped eggs is I'm going to put them in this egg turner and just let them sit here. I'm not turning the egg turner on. They're just going to sit here overnight, 12, 24 hours, something like that. I'm going to go 12 hours. That's probably plenty. And then uh, they'll go in the incubator. Um, put your eggs pointy side down. 
bigger side up, that's the way you want to sit them in the incubator or the um, egg turner. Now, if you're not going to use an egg turner, you don't have to. You can turn them manually by hand, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, but if you're not using an egg turner, then you can just leave them in the uh, styrofoam container. Just leave them sit on the counter here next to it for 24 hours, 12 hours, whatever. Let them settle and get acclimated, and then, uh, then they'll go in the incubator. Now, I'm going to be spraying these eggs down. This is a 50% or a 50 mixture of water and uh, gold Listerine, just regular gold Listerine. So this is a good way to make sure I don't have any kind of bacteria problems in there. Not sanitize, but kind of clean the eggs uh, before they go into the incubator. And that's pretty much it for today. Let me back this camera up so I can talk to you a little bit more before I, uh, before I close out this section of the video. So again, that's all I'm going to be doing tonight. I've got my incubator already plugged in. It's uh, heating up right now. I am going to go get a uh, black plastic trash bag set underneath the incubator because it's sitting on top of this wooden shelf. And I, they do have a tendency to leak just a little bit, a little bit of moisture or whatever. It's condensation and different things is going to gather underneath it. I don't want that to ruin the top. I've got it sitting on a piece of cardboard right now. So I'm going to replace that with, I'm just going to use a black trash bag, big, you know, gallons or well. 30 gallon size trash bag, it'll sit underneath there really well and it'll catch all the water that comes out. Won't have to worry about it ruining the top of my workbench here. My, it's my reloading bench is what it is, but anyway. So I've got the incubator going, it's heated up. Uh, looks like the, the uh, humidity is dropping down. The humidity is not as important as temperature. Uh, for the, uh, you know, up until lockdown, you really want the humidity level to be somewhere around 55 to 60%, well, Closer to 55 to 70 percent, somewhere right around in there, in between there. Um, if you can keep it right at about 60 to 65 percent, that's going to be just fine. Don't stress about it too much. In the summertime around here, when we have high humidity, we, we always have high humidity in the summertime. When the humidity these levels are running in the 80, 85 percent range, I don't put any water in the incubator. I just let it run until lockdown. Now, lockdown is going to be different, and we'll talk about that when we get to that, but that's going to be 14 days from today. So we're not going to worry about that right now. We'll address it when we get to that point. Um, but that's it. There's nothing else to do. Let the incubator heat up. Let the uh, eggs rest. And then tomorrow, uh, this whole... Um, what's it called, egg turner, with all the eggs in it, is going to go in the incubator itself. We'll get it all turned on, get the eggs turning, we'll get the incubation process started. I've got to find a place to put my Whiskey Tango Farm sticker. But i got to say, I am incredibly impressed with their packing. Every egg made it, not a single egg cracked. I like the added uh, little thing they did with the uh, incubation instructions. It's got a link to their website on there, which... I think it's got a link to their website. It's got a link to their Facebook anyway, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash whiskey tango farms SWTF. Make sure you put that, or well, WTF, I guess is what it is. We'll see if I can get that in here without, let me, there, maybe that will show up on screen. I'll put a link down below in the uh, description here where you can get to uh, their, their site and uh, you can order eggs if you need to order eggs. Great supplier, good people. Um, I got the uh, pleasure of uh, kind of getting to know them a little bit at QuailCon this year, and they're just fantastic, good-hearted people. They'll take care of you, so if you need eggs, there's another option for you to order supplies from, or order eggs from, I should say, and many other things. They sell some t-shirts and some of those kinds of things that you might enjoy as well, so go check them out in the link below. All right, that's it for tonight. We're going to wait till tomorrow. I'll pick this video back up, and then we'll follow these eggs all the way through the incubation process. Okay, got the recorder started. We are recording video. Mic situated, I think we're good to go. Let's, let's do that. So, I'm gonna zoom, oh, we got scoot back just a little bit. Just a little. All right, so it is the next day now. These things have been resting overnight. They're ready to go ahead and put put in the incubator. Um, it's pretty easy to do. I did go ahead and add some water. I filled up two of the trays in the incubator because it's pretty dry out right now. So that should get me, I'll watch it, but um, it hasn't lifted the, uh, the humidity level in the incubator yet, but it was running 45% humidity or something like that. And honestly, these you know humidity gauges on the incubators are not incredibly accurate. Um, the only way to get real humidity is relative humidity, which is kind of a complicated process using a, a, um, a wet dry bulb. You can look that up if you want to and kind of figure that out. But humidity is not as important as temperature. But I did bump it up a little bit 
uh, put a little bit of water in there so they're not going to dry out too much. Um, the other thing, make sure you remove your vent plugs from your incubator. Uh, this has got two holes. Lift the lid up here, you can see there's vent plugs that go in there. Just take them out and throw them away. You don't need them. They need ventilation in there. They don't need uh, to be all plugged up. Now that is going to make it a little bit more difficult to uh, gauge your humidity, but you can open it up and add more water as you need to. So I'm just going to be, uh, I know I'm going to be blocking the camera probably most of this, but it's a pretty simple process. Just take the egg turner with all the eggs in it and set it in the incubator. If I can get around the cords and it makes a terrible squeaking noise sometimes. There we go. So uh, let's bring the camera in. We'll show you what it looks like. Not that it's that exciting, but still, we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so there's all the eggs in the incubator. I don't remember which ones are which. I've already kind of forgotten. I'm going to have to go back and look at the video to see which ones are which. Of course, these are the Celadon eggs here, but I don't remember the rest of them. I think these are the Jumbos, and I don't remember, but we'll figure that out later. Not important. 99.5 uh, degrees on the incubator. It's actually running a little lower than that right now. It's showing 93.2, but it'll... It's because it's been open. It'll heat back up. And uh, that's it. We're going to wait 14 days till they go into uh, to, uh, lockdown at that point, and then uh, we'll go from there. But uh, there's not a whole lot more to do right now. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of watch them, make sure that the egg turner is working, uh, make sure, I mean, I'll plug it in, but it, it's going to be awful slow. You're not going to be able to see it moving necessarily. Um, if you do not have an egg turner, um, that's okay. You can incubate without an egg turner. Uh, you can just lay the eggs in the incubator. You could do it a couple of different ways. You could put them in uh, egg cartons and tilt the egg cartons up on the side and then rotate them a couple of times a day. So that, that'll basically turn them. Okay, or another thing that you could do is you could uh, just lay the eggs in the bottom of the incubator and then just with your hands, take, roll them around like this just a little bit gently roll them around just a couple of times a day and that would be fine as well. The egg turner makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more hands off, a little bit more automatic. Uh, but anyway, we'll be back with you as uh, the progress gro uh, goes and especially uh, when we go into lockdown and they start hatching out. All right, so it is day 15. That means the day I set them in the incubator was 15 days ago. You know, So the day I put them in the incubator, day zero, and then 15 days later. So we're on day 15. It's time to get these eggs out of the egg turner, get them in the incubator, and go into lockdown, which is the phase we're going to be just closing the incubator up, not opening it again until the eggs hatch. Now, I haven't really had to do much to this. Um, I did have to add water once to uh, kind of keep the humidity levels up just a little bit because it is a little dry, but that's about it. So we're going to try to work pretty quickly here. I'm going to open the incubator up, get the egg turner out, make sure I unplug it. Get the egg turner out. I am going to have to add water because, let me get this out of here. So I am going to have to add water to it because it is awful dry and you do need to bump the humidity up a little bit whenever you uh, go into lockdown. So what I've got is warm water here, about you know 100 degrees, tried to get it about that hot. Um, I'm gonna fill up two full channels. I don't need to fill them all up because I don't want the humidity level too high, but I do need to make sure that I've got enough water in there to get a little bit of humidity in there. Now, if you're going to, this would be the time to um, candle your eggs and just check to see if there's anything in them. You can do that by, I'll show you real quick, slide in here so it may not show up real well, but you can definitely see, maybe you can see this on camera, maybe you can't, but there is an air sac in this egg, but the whole egg is not lit up. And I know that's not, it's not really showing you much. Let me try it another way. So right there, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. Let me get over here in the darker part. Maybe you can see that. There's an egg air sac in there. You can see that part that's glowing in the egg, but the rest of the egg is dark. So that means there's a chick developing in there. So it's a good egg. Now, if you find one that glows like a light bulb, let me see if I find one. No. I don't usually bother candling my eggs. I usually just put them in there. But there, there we go. This is no good. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but the whole egg lights up just glows like a light bulb. There's nothing developing inside of there. So that egg is no good. 
So we're going to put that one out to the side. <clears throat> There's another one. That one doesn't look good either, but we're going to put that in there. So let me just get the rest of these put in the uh, incubator here real quick. There's no sense in you watching me do every single one of them. All I'm doing is taking, my hand, taking them out, putting them in there. I would say wash your hands before you do this. Don't do this with dirty hands. You don't want to introduce that bacteria to them. But uh, that's about it. All right, so got all the eggs in the incubator. Now let me bring you over and show you a real close example of this. What you want to do is just put them in the middle of the incubator. Push them close, close together real quick. I do need to kind of hurry and get this thing closed back up, but I got a second here. I can show you what they look like. All right, so that's the eggs in the incubator. Again, you want to put them all close together. I'm going to go ahead and close this up because you don't need to keep looking at them. Uh, you're going to get a shot of them, but you want to put them all close together because, well, hang on. Let me get this all closed up. Okay, so try that again. The reason you put them all close together is because that act of them starting to hatch kind of encourages the other birds to start to hatch. So hopefully you'll get them all to hatch pretty close together. What's more than likely going to happen, it's going to be a day or two, well, a couple of days. Uh, we should get them to start to hatch out in the next two to three days, somewhere right around in there. We'll get a whole bunch of them that all hatch at once, and then a couple more that start hatching in several days, at, you know, for the next couple of days. Um, I usually wait until they start hatching usually around day 17 day 18 and I'll wait until about day 25 or 26 before I call it a completed hatch and throw the rest of the eggs away that didn't hatch. You usually get a couple of late hatches, um, several birds that will hatch out a little bit later than the first group. So there's not really much else to do right now and just wait for them to start hatching and when they do start hatching try to control your urge to open the incubator up and grab them out of there. We want to let them sit in there until they're good and dry and fluffy but we'll talk more about that as these guys start to hatch. So we'll be back with you here in a day or two whenever they start hatching. Well right on cue three days later these guys are hatching. Now I don't know if I'll be able to show you these guys. I'll bring you in the camera a little bit close and we'll try to look through the window but they're kind of fogged up. They got little water droplets on them from the humidity inside there so it's hard to see through the glass. I do not want to open this incubator. They just started hatching today so I came home from work and there's a bunch of birds hatched out. Most of them it looks like, almost all of them. I can't tell if there's any that haven't hatched yet or not, but there's a pretty good group of them hatched. But I do not want to go opening this up right away because when those guys first come out of the incubator or out of the egg, when they hatch out, uh, they're, they're wet, they it takes time to dry off, and you don't want to just open the incubator. That rush of fresh air in there can do a couple of things, or cool air, I should say, can do a couple of things. It can chill your birds, and the ones that are not completely dried out and fluffy, it could kill them, they could die from that. Or um, if you have birds that are getting ready to hatch, maybe they've pipped the shell, they put a hole in the shell, but they haven't hatched out yet, it can shrink wrap them inside the egg so they don't hatch. So I'm going to give these guys at least 24 hours. You can go up to 48 or even 72 hours if you had to. I like to give them at least 24 to 48 hours, somewhere right around in there. Make sure they're all dry and fluffy. Then I'll open the incubator, take them all out. And the ones that haven't hatched, I'll add a little bit more water if I need to doesn't look like I'm going to need to. I'll add a little bit more water and then close it back up and give them a couple more days. It's not uncommon for birds to start, you know, they start hatching out on day 17, 18, but it's not uncommon to get birds to hatch out 22, day 23, day 24, you know, somewhere around in there. So I always give them until about day 25 or 26 before I just give up and get rid of the eggs that didn't hatch. Now it looks like almost all of these, if not all of these eggs have hatched. So I'm pretty happy with those results. If you are looking for more detailed instructions on hatching your eggs, I have an entire playlist on how to incubate, how to improve your, your hatch rates. And I'll link that up here. Actually, I think it's on this side of the screen. I always forget. I always get it mixed up which side's on. But I'll link it up there. You can go watch that video series if you need um, instructions, more detailed instructions on hatching out uh, quail eggs or any kind of egg, really. It applies to any kind of uh, bird that you may be hatching out. Uh, the only difference might be humidity levels on some things are a little bit different. Duck eggs, for example, require a little higher humidity. With the quail, I like to keep it in around the... 50% range, somewhere right around in there, 50 to 60% until I go into lockdown and then bump it up to about 75%. That means you're going to have to play with your incubator a little bit before you go incubating eggs so you know how much water to add. And that's going to vary a little bit depending on time of year. So let's get in close. Let's see if we can't take a look at these guys, see what we can see through the glass in the incubator window. Uh, you might be able to hear them chirping out. You can see a couple of them moving them around in there maybe. Let's try the other window.
Yeah, this is not going to be a great shot. It's having a hard time deciding on what to focus on, but you can kind of see them moving around in there. So I know that wasn't a fantastic view inside the incubator, looking through the windows of the incubator with all the water droplets on it, but it's the best I could do right now, and I want to get this video out for you guys. Um, you can tell most, if not all of them, have hatched already. So you know what I'm going to do at this point is just leave them in here until probably tomorrow when I get home from work or maybe even the next morning uh, before I go to work and then I'll move them out into the uh, brooder box which is already set up and already all warmed up for them. So again if you need more detailed instructions check out that link I'm leaving up there. You can go check out my whole series on incubating eggs. Um, what else? What else? What else? The only other thing I would say is don't expect to get super high hatch rates with shipped eggs. If you get anything over 50% with shipped eggs, you're doing pretty good and you've got a pretty good reputable breeder that's shipping you the eggs because there's just too many factors that can go into an affecting whether the eggs hatch or not. And that's how the post office stored them while they were shipping them to you. If We don't know if they stored them in a 100 degree truck for a day or two or, you know, sub freezing temperatures for a little while or, you know, who knows, the humidity levels. There's all these different factors that play into that. So if you get anything over about a 50% hatch rate, you're doing pretty good with shipped eggs. Now with these eggs, again, these came from Whiskey Tango Farms. And I, I don't remember how many I said initially, but I had about 10 eggs that I had to throw out when I went into lockdown because they they didn't develop. So the rest of them, it looks like they pretty much have all hatched already. If not, there's only two or three left uh, that need to hatch. So pretty good hatch rate out of these eggs. I can't remember how many I started with, so I can't give you the exact uh, number, but you can probably go back to the beginning of the video and count them up and uh, get an idea of what that kind of hatch rate that's going to be. Um, so again, if you're looking for eggs, Whiskey Tango Farms is a great supplier. I'll leave a link to their website down below uh, where you can get in contact with them. And uh, I guess that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, God bless.